doing here? Well, I'm going to do a little live uh, broadcast here on YouTube and um, do some tests here, see how it's going to work and um, <clears throat> just go from there. You go over here and uh, I'm controlling it all and uh, getting my desktop now, I'm controlling it all. Playing my music and doing everything else. So uh, that was a song from my website, uh, Misty, from uh, dawnsongs.com. <clears throat> I have uh, two albums on here, Dawn Songs and Living Beings Climate Control. And uh, <clears throat> you can download them if you'd like the music there uh, for free in MP3s. Uh, just click on the album covers and the links and stuff in there. And uh, if you, when you're over there on the... Uh, the links here just you can right click and save as the old fashioned way and uh, also you can go to uh, archive.org click on that link there each site has a archive.org page and you can you can also download them there from there and listen to them listen to them in a player and uh, you can download them in different formats there or you can down, I think there's one yeah see VBR zip that'll download all of them 64k zip and stuff like that if you want to download them all at once but uh, so anyway I think I'll just leave that like that now <clears throat> I uh, I'm using OBS studio open broadcasting studio and uh, I'll just make sure I'm mean, where I think I am so I'm, I'm talking about my desktop I want to be showing my desktop but, and you see the video feedback when I'm on the control screen here uh, but uh, <clears throat> See, I'll click on click on visit the website and uh, show that OBS Studio Open Broadcaster Studio is what I'm using here, and I've used it a couple, few times in past in the years past, and uh, I really like it. But I had trouble on YouTube uh, with the audio and video getting out of sync, so it really wasn't useful. And not just this, but all the streaming apps I tried are the ones that you know. I mean, it really wouldn't matter if they cost money or they were free or open source or not. I tried XSplit, which is free, limited use, you know, like limited functionality. And it worked okay, but any of them, you get over about 10 minutes, and the, uh, you'd be lucky to get 10 minutes of in-sync audio and video. Uh, so, um, a lot, you know, and it has – everything plays into there, your bandwidth, your – your uh, how big – how uh, high resolution of a file you're trying to do, audio, video, and all that bandwidth of your internet connection and uh, and your machine's capabilities and back then I, I did I had dual core machines is all I had uh, and now I have a quad core and uh, also there was something I, I kept trying for 30 frames per second and I wouldn't go below 15 because I just thought that'd be terrible because 30 frames per second was the standard video frame rate you know and then and then and at that time they were already beginning to make some higher frame rates you know so what I finally discovered, uh, actually, I've been using uh, for. Let's see if it'll come up. I think my machine may be getting a little overwhelmed already here. I maybe have tried opening up too much stuff or doing the stream, doing the stream and see. Right now, I'm doing this stream and recording at the same time. And uh, let's see, but it may be getting. I don't know. And that now, if your machine's overwhelmed, then. Uh, Let's see how much memory I'm using. That's not so bad. Not you know, 635 megabytes. Uh, I've got four gig of memory. Uh, Firefox. I won't hold still. Let me organize it by memory so it'll hold still. There we go. 532. So you know, it's just what I have open in Firefox is uh, is using a little more memory uh, than I would uh, like. But I, I was seeing, I've been testing OBS Studio just recording, and it was staying down to 200 to 400 megabytes. So I guess the stream makes that much difference. But if my machine starts slowing down, then I know i got problems that I probably can't overcome. But I'm going to do this test for a little while. I want to just see if it works. And if it doesn't, I'll have to adjust what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do all at once. But I want to be able to do a full desktop video and show things. I had this open earlier. I can. Uh, this is a good. Uh, uh, I'm on Fedora 23 Linux. So li that's my favorite. Uh, Fedora Linux is my favorite operating system. I've used it since 2005 uh, every day. And uh, 
this is called QAS Mixer for ALSA uh, Audio, uh, which is the default audio for Fedora, audio uh, software, or control software. And you can, uh, right here on that loopback mixing, you can enable that, and then I can pull this one up, and I can hear myself talking. And sometimes you want to do that, uh, you know. But I don't, I don't like my, my own voice ear echoing in my ears when I'm just talking, so I, I'll leave it off. But uh, uh, And the main reason I want to use OBS Studio, I've been using, uh, there we go, GTK Record My Desktop, and it works well. Uh, well, actually, it doesn't. There's two modes you can use it in, ALSA and uh, with uh, Jack Audio. Jack is a really in-depth, powerful audio uh, server. And it will take the ALSA stream, and then it will, I'll call it a stream, but the audio, take your ALS, ALSA audio, and it'll pull, hoard it into just all different ways. And this is the control app that I use. Uh, I call it QJackie. It's QJackCTL, I guess. Yeah, QJackCTL. I just call it QJackie because that's what it looked like to me when I saw it. But anyway, with ALA, ALSA, when I'm making videos, these are the ones I'm making right now. Uh by the way, if you don't see your file growing, then uh, you're probably not getting audio. I learned that well. At least that's what I learned with GTK Record My Desktop, or actually Record My Desktop. Oh, I don't have any files in there. I, I backed them up to my USB hard drive and then deleted them to get space on here. So anyway, um, the audio will... Um, the reason that I'm trying to led me to go back and try UBS Studio, OBS Studio... Uh, ALSA audio sometimes will just the audio will just quit working and go dead and you don't know it unless you come over here and look and happen to remember to come over here and look and you see that it's not the file's not growing it's still making video but it's not making audio and video so it's growing so slow you don't see the numbers change is what it is and so but if you use Jack I'm not going to open them up because I'm afraid I'll get too much going on the machine at once um, if you use Jack audio then um, it, it's been dependable and I haven't had any trouble but I can't I'm supposing you just heard the music and everything, and of course I don't know. It's getting it's a little tricky to get the uh, levels right because I can turn up what I was saying here. I can turn up my mic in in my speakers and hear it, but that and it's good that uh, whatever you set in here for the desktop audio, it stays the same. If you change your volume, it doesn't change this slider here, desktop audio, and that's good because you wouldn't want that to happen really. That would really your volume be all over the place for your recording, but you don't mon you can't you if you can't monitor both your voice and the uh, desktop audio at the same time, then you really not you don't know how to mix it. You're just guessing at it, you know. And I mean, of course, I did a bunch of trials and listened back. You know, I did three of them, three recordings tonight already, and so I have a fairly good idea. But like when I had it up kind of loud and then I brought it back a little at a time, I was just kind of guessing from my memory of what I heard earlier, but I. I used to mix sound for bands from like 1983 to 2000, you know, uh, for live shows and bands and stuff. And so, you know, I I depend on listening. <laughs> I have to hear it. And um, so I need, if I can figure out a way to do that, that's why I had this open. And I haven't seen a way to do that. And I didn't want to spend a lot of time either figuring that out. But uh, um, maybe some settings in... Uh, OBS Studio that I can do that with, but uh, and maybe I'll have to get back there and you know read some more on the site. But I'd used it before quite a bit, and mostly I really just ended up doing a bunch of really long tests, and then decided not to keep using it because of my audio I could not get my audio and video into to stay in sync. Uh, but what I learned during my uh, all this time recent this last actually the last six months or really not even that long three months of using uh, GTK Record My Desktop. Uh, I don't want to open it up. I'm afraid it might mess something up with my audio and my ALSA. But you can, uh, like I said, you can use Jack, which worked well. But in your frame rate, I was shooting for 30 frames per second. Well, with the desktop video, I finally got to reading on their website. And I finally found out that five. what I arrived at, five frames per second, makes perfect sync. I don't care if it's 10 minutes or two-hour video, between your audio and video. And... Uh, I can in, and it used to have to wait for it to encode, and it could take thirty minutes to two hours to encode the video. Before and, and that's was using a lot of system resources, and I couldn't really do a lot while I was waiting. Couldn't shut the system down like if I was done and wanted to go to bed, you know, and have it running. And so I, I figured out how, and you can encode on the fly, but uh, 
to go all into that, I think I've made videos about it before. It's kind of hard to do just talking about it, but uh, I got it to where I could go. Encode on the fly, five frames per second, and actually you set your uh, audio and video settings. Instead of going back, to, you'd think that would use less resources, but when you're encoding on the fly, you actually want everything uh, 100%. So <laughs> it works really well, except for the problems with ALSA audio dropping out. And the other thing is I never could figure out a way to be able to play, a, a, you know, like if I play a video or music during my, my uh, screencast, you couldn't hear it in the recording. All you could hear was the mic. So OBS Studio has got, it's a studio, you know, I mean, you can, you, you can go and put titles, video stream, that screencast, um, you know what whatever uh and you can put you can put as many this is open source you can put as many it's not like these x split and these others where you can only put like two or three or four uh scenes in there without paying a monthly fee or whatever some of them are like a monthly subscription you just put whatever you want in there and uh they just uh trust you to donate to them to help them keep going you know so um make sure i'm still in desktop um because if you stay in the camera mode and you switch and start talking about the desktop, you're still just showing the camera. And that camera is, uh, that's a, a, my phone. And it is uh, streaming from my phone with a, it's a little app, Android app called IP Webcam. It's pretty good. And I had to go down to 720p for it to stream well enough to use it. Uh, and it's still a little delay, like when I move and stuff. And if you watch my mouth move, it'll drive you crazy because it's not in sync exactly. But uh, it's not 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 the worst thing I've seen. You know, I've seen my webcams are, are worse as far as the well, the picture's worse. <laughs> the mouth might be working okay in there, but the picture's bad. Anyway, OBS Studio. That's what led me back to OBS Studio, and uh, um, I really like everything about it. But I just couldn't get the sync. So now that I've discovered, um how to make the desktop video sync uh, audio and video and that was the biggest thing when you're doing a desktop video if the audio and video is not in sync and you show things and it don't make any sense at all if they're not together so uh, you can actually get away with it better with a, a you know a live video of your face than you than you can or when with a little lag than you can with a desktop because you're pointing to something you're talking about it so um, and you know I just went to uh, my Fedora repos and installed it. I hadn't even been back to the website lately, so I don't. I don't even uh, know what it says here. But um, <clears throat> it um, anyway. I'm at uh, the lowest it'll go in frames per second is 10 frames per second, uh, and so I set it to that, and then uh, set everything else up. You know, set me a few scenes and stuff in here, and uh, and I don't want to stay in this screen because you get that video feedback, and I think it makes the machine work harder if you leave it there a long time too. So, um, so when I'm talking about it, I'll just come back over here and it's called, uh, obsproject.com. That's an, its website. And, uh, I won't sit here and read that off. I'd probably just mess it up anyway, but it'll, tr it'll stream to Twitch and, uh, Hitbox. I don't know. I guess that's an icon for Hitbox. I don't even know what Hitbox is. Something to do with gaming, I think. YouTube and... I guess it's just those three. I think there might be more in the application. I can't really open up the menus in the application because, see, there's their donate button. And they have a community chat and a blog and, and uh, all that. So um, you should definitely check it out because, you know, you if you have a, if you want to do streaming, actually, you don't have to just do streaming. You can do des desktop videos and just save them, just say, uh, just record them to your drive. That's what I've been doing this evening. Uh, but I'm, I'm doing both right now because that way I want to see if the recorded video is any better or if the recorded video turns out good and the stream video turns out bad, you know, like a bad sync and stuff, then I could still go ahead and upload the recorded video. So it's great. You know, it's good. You can have a backup of your video. But if it turns out good, then I don't have to upload it. It's already uploaded. This is automatically... And I had YouTube open... Uh, uh, in, uh, but for some reason, for a long time, actually, uh, when I go to, I can watch all the YouTube videos I want in uh, Firefox. This is Firefox. Uh, it's a new version, Firefox 51. And I have plenty of add-ons and block ads and all kinds of stuff that drives me nuts, you know. 
I can't stand all that blinking stuff and all that and tracking, block tracking and everything, cookies and everything. Um, and so I'm not sure which one is doing it, but uh, but I did finally figure out that it's something about my add-ons that makes uh, there's some particular script. And I can't. I had to hurry up and get out of there before I could start my. It's what took me so long to get started on my recording. I had to. It was freezing up my web browser and it was slowing down my whole machine. And it's a script error that'll come up and then you cl and then I'll I'll um, some and usually it'll keep keep coming. Sometimes I can say stop the script, you know, if you've ever seen those, and then it'll work okay. But it'll usually in a few minutes it'll do it again. But uh, I also have on my machine uh, Firefox Devel Developer Edition, and I don't have all those add-ons in it. And uh, and I guess I'll just go there right now. In that uh, I don't need to play any more music right now. And I'm done I'm kind of showing OBS Studio. But I can't run both browsers at the same time just normally. And that's because even though I have a, a quad-core uh, i5 with 4 gig of RAM, which is, you know, not fantastic, but it's medium-range machine, it only has, uh, i got to make sure it's down before I do anything else, it only has 256 megabyte of video memory. And it will fill up, and the machine will just slow down and lock up after a while if I keep going and don't stop. And the web browsers are the number one offenders to doing that to your machine. So, um, as a matter of fact, there's a web interface to control my, uh, I can change settings and v actually view my uh, stream. This stream here, I mean, uh, uh, where I'm showing me here, I like it this way because this is going through VLC through OBS Studio and it's full screen. Uh, and that's exactly what I want, you know. But uh, you can view it and set it up and change settings uh, in the web browser. Um, what what the IP webcam is, it, and it's kind of what it's aimed. It, it works with VLC. You can do it in the VLC media player. I did it that way first, and that actually streams better than in the web browser. But uh, I. Um, um, I figured out today in my earlier tests that uh, if I leave that web browser window open for this webcam app, this IP webcam, uh, then somehow it just keeps filling up and filling up my memory. It's not. Uh, it's like the. It's as if the uh, webcam data is not going to the cache in the you know on the hard drive. It's going to the actual RAM memory in the machine and staying there until it fills it up. I sit there and watched it just. See, I keep this open all the time and, and keep a track on my machine and what's happening to it. See, uh, that's only 252 megabytes uh, with uh, Firefox Developer Edition running. It, and then there's uh, now CLBS Studio is up to a gig of memory right now. I had to watch it. I couldn't uh, add too many. There's certain things. Well, like I added more audio streams because I thought I needed them. And uh, that made, uh, made it use 3 gig of memory. And so I, at first I couldn't use it. And I don't know right now, it's probably because I'm streaming to YouTube, I'm going to imagine, because I haven't changed any of this over here. Now, hopefully that won't be a killer for me. And I know before I could, uh, what I could, I did was I had to end up doing was only stream and not, uh, and not, uh, only stream to the internet and not save to the hard drive at the same time. My machines, my dual cores couldn't do it. But uh, I'm going to keep, you know, keep it just like it is this time and see if it just stays there. I mean, I could handle a gig of memory out of, of a, I actually have 3.7 of usable gig after my uh, video memory because it's an onboard chip, not a dedicated memory card, video card. So if it, I'll have to keep looking back here because I just now noticed that crawling up because it was at four or five, uh, what was it, 400 megabytes or something when I first started. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty odd. And it's really odd in Linux because Linux really has all it does and always has done much much better at managing memory than Windows. It uh, it will clean it out. Everything you're not using, it will just clean it out, and it it'll uh, um, actually you will think you're using up all your memory, uh, but it will keep cleaning it out. So, but I kind of have over the years of using this machine, you know, I've kind of learned when it's a looks like a problem when it doesn't and that looks like a problem right there like it could be a potential problem i mean so because i don't sit and watch it all the time you know uh, i usually only look over there when something's slowing and down and not working right really 
But uh, I'm going to go. I can go to probably go to YouTube here without it. I won't get those script errors, and that script error really wants to freeze up in my machine. And I should be able to um, show the live stream for a minute here. I want to see what it's doing and show it. So let me get to my area. Let's see, video manager. And you have to go like through several clicks to get to that that one, uh, the one with the uh, live streaming link. There might be a quicker way, but I don't remember it. Seems like I remember finding a quick, click quicker way. Okay, now it says that uh, I'm having a problem. That's why I wanted to go there. They keep giving you these date updates about stuff. Live streaming, scheduling, improve, YouTube analytics. Yeah, that's been up there. I already closed it. Okay, so you can actually see my stream. See right here. And um, I can pause it, though, and I think I'll do that. And then the audio is uh, automatically paused. If you turn it on, you'll get like a, you know, a delay, and it really bothers your ears. It says, please use a keyframe frequency of four seconds or less. Current keyframes are not being sent often enough, which will cause buffering. The current keyframe frequency is 15.2 seconds. Note that ingestion. Uh, I can't read anymore. Oh, wait. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. Note that ingestion errors can cause incorrect GOP group of picture sizes. Okay. 11.36 p.m. Bad video settings. So I guess it's the same note twice is what it is. So, I think what I'll better do, I remember having, I, I didn't check that. I didn't, I forgot. I remember that now from before. Uh, you know, I had to, uh, let's see. This says, please use the keyframe frequency of four seconds or less. Okay, and it's set to, and that was automatic, or that's the defaults, or whatever. I think you can set it to do it automatically, or it's defaulted to automatically, and then that sometimes causes trouble. But I need to set it to four seconds or less. I think four was the least that I could put in the app last last time I used it. Oh, I see it brings you down there. Oh yeah, and there's a live chat, and oh, really funny. Last time I used, I was actually using, what's it called, Insta Lively on my phone. I was just testing it. And, uh, you know, I just used it and it didn't work. It didn't work to my satisfaction. And, uh, and then later, I went back to uh, look at the video and I wanted to rename it uh, the one after I was finished. And I saw this on the right of that video. And it's, you know, the place to watch it, not the live, but the, the regular video and it was someone that i knew saying what's up you know and i didn't know when they did it i guess you know i didn't know if they were doing it right then or if it had happened earlier or what and and they also had made a comment so i answered the comment and actually i saw the comment first and then i think it was actually the next day when i saw it right in here said what's up and so i wasn't sure if they were there right then or what i was actually making another video and so i answered it right in that video and they didn't say anything back so i never did figure it all out but uh, I didn't know that that Insta Lively streamed live like this. I thought it streamed, uh, it, it saved it to your phone and then uploaded it. That's what I thought. So Insta Lively, the app, Android app, does <laughs> stream live to YouTube. Just like this does. But uh, in order for it to work, you know, your phone doesn't even get near as much bandwidth as your as your. Uh, computer well i mean my i'm wired connection not wi-fi and so it's 100 megabits and then my router can do a, a gigabit you know a thousand megabits a phone's the best they ever get is 72 megabits uh wi-fi but uh well my internet connection is 60 down and four up so and the up is what matters when you're streaming so that's the other thing is big factor on your streaming videos is what's your upload uh speed so, um, yeah, I don't think I need that right now, so I'll close it. It's actually not closing. It's just minimizing, but get it out of there so I won't keep wondering what it is. I see it over there, and I think, what is that? Why is that there? So, I can't change it now. 
Let me go see how long I've gone, if I can tell. Can I even tell? Oh, I have to tell that on YouTube, I guess. Can you tell that? Yeah, there you go. I know there's a way. Okay, 25 minutes already. Okay, so I'm going to stop and change that to four seconds or less. And, you know, I might be able to go in here and show what I'm talking about, but you go into the settings. But I'm not going to because I don't want to mess up what I got here. But uh, <coughs> I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, <coughs> Sorry, I'm just going to go ahead and um, go, get out, and um, go back to my video stream, I guess. I'll go ahead and go and uh, go set that, I'll, and see what this is like, and then the next time I do one, I'll, I'll go ahead and change that to make sure I don't forget. But uh, you you can really make a real production with this OBS Studio. you got to be able to think straight to do it, and you got to figure out how to set it up right. And you have to have all those factors working though for it to work. So, um, uh, well, this is Dawn, and uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and go now and uh, go do that setting. All right, bye bye.